Right, hello everybody, and I thought I'd sew in the signatures today, okay? This is all, the only thing I've added in here was a piece of vellum because I forgot, basically. So I've put a piece of vellum in on here, okay? Which I thought was quite nice. So that's, that's all I've done, and the rest you'd seen, so that's fine. You might see also that your one minute you'll see this cover and next minute you'll see a different cover. That's only because I'm doing two journals but the inside of the journals are exactly the same just the covers aren't. Okay um, what else? Oh yeah and I also printed out one of these onto tracing paper and I put double sided sticky tape or score tape whatever country you're in on the back okay because I want to use this as washi tape all right vellum washi tape and I thought well that's quite nice you know to put through the journal so I'd use that because the only Christmas one I've got is silver so sometimes you just you know you don't want that so I've got that that's sort of Christmassy wintery which I will be using okay right so I cut, the first thing I do is I cut a template and I'll do the same size as the signature. Okay, and to find my middle, doesn't matter how wide, you, you know, unless you do more signatures and then you would need to do a grid how you want it. That's just how I work, you know. So I do that and I fold it up in the middle to find my middle. Okay, and I will put a dot in this side and I'll put a cross in the back. All right, and then after I do that, I go up that way because I'm doing a three pamper, three stitch pamper stitch, and there. So that gives me my three markers. And they're perfect, really, that way. Okay, and then again, I'll cross that and then I'll fold this piece. So I would do it at sort of two and a half inches or something. Fold it in half, which gives me my middle nice straight line, and then I'll pencil it in. Okay, so for when I do this, I find the middle here from that way, okay, and I'll find the middle there. All right, so when I do this, this, this gets it more accurate. That will go, that cross will go on that dot there, okay, and then I line up the top. And then I'll punch through the three holes that way. Okay, and I do exactly the same. Usually I'll go top, bottom. You know, I'll put that on now. Is that the top? I'm not sure. Yeah. So that's top. And bottom. I don't normally need to do the bottom because you know that's the top. <laughs> but that's the way I do it. So when this goes in, here when I do it. I mean you can do it all together. I don't tend to but I can. So I put that in there. Get it lined up if I was doing it all together. And now that I put that in the middle and I'll find the middle of here. Just put a little tiny pencil mark which I haven't done yet. So I'll do that because that's my centre. Which is it's a bit awkward. It's one because I go because it's in between the numbers. I'll go seven and I'll count. So I'll go one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that'll be three and a half, which is half seven, plus half a five. So I'll go three and a half. So half a five would be two and a half. So that's one, two, and a little bit. Okay, that is my middle. Okay, so when that, I stick that in and put that there. Okay, and then that will be the same. I actually might, because it's not too thick a signature, I might do it all together. All right, which I'll go and get my little thing that I use, which hubby made me. And I'll make sure these are all square and then I'll be back. Okay, I've got my little contraption my husband made me. So I make sure that's all nicely lined up. I've squared everything inside and exactly where I want it. And that's the top, that's the bottom. And again, put that cross where that one is. 
that mark. I'm going to go for it all because there's not too many pages. If there was a lot of pages, I usually do them separate, but I don't need to. So that's the middle. I have a nice pick, and I just keep that little stopper there to keep it stop it going through too far, and then I'll punch through. the holes made and while that's there I'll stick something so it doesn't move unless you've got to line everything up again like so okay now that's ready to be stitched in now and that's gone through nicely that way okay and that's the thing how we made it's you might not be able to see it very well it's sort of like just the two planks of wood that's angled Okay, on a base. Okay, so I've got my wax linen thread that I got off eBay. Okay, that's what I use. <clears throat> that's that one. I've got blunt-ended needle with a big hole, eyelet there. And I usually do four times the length. I know you're only going three, but because I want something to hang down here, I'll do four. Okay, so I start going in the middle, okay, which is moved already. Yeah, this has. Okay, all right, just find that one first. There we go. And then I'll put that back on. I think it's so hard to show. All right, now I'll leave a bit down here. Okay, then you can either go that one or this one. It's up to you what you want to go through first. Right, I like to actually, I do it this way. All right, I like to see the needle. All right, see where it's going instead of trying to fish for where the hole is. No, well, that's just me. It's just too hard to, <laughs> to um, show you. We're there. You wouldn't believe it, would you, when you make the holes all at the same time and yet they don't go through. It's just unbelievable. I can't even, I don't even know whether you can see. It's there. I tighten everything up after as well. So I think this is one of the hardest processes to actually film. Okay. Okay, I'll go through this one right at the top. So the from right at the bottom and I'll go straight to the top. Okay, there's equal amounts you can go in and out, but you can't with this one. Let's make sure I'm going through, which I'm not. There we go. Sometimes they go through straight away, which is great, but other times they don't. Yeah. Okay, so let's pull that. I don't like I say I don't pull it too tight. Alright. 
and do that then I flip over and I go through the middle one again making sure you don't catch hold of that wax thread at all because it will split it through the middle so I've gone I've gone through the wax thread there so I need to go back through and get out of that situation let's have a look because I won't be able to pull it tight I'll take that off and it happens and it will today because I'm videoing <laughs> I've got separate now all right so what I do now is I'll just pull it nice and tight and before I tie anything off I'll make sure that's nice and tight here okay can you see that all right so make sure that's nice and tight Just nice and gently. Okay, and then I'll slip one underneath. Okay, so on the other side of that. So I've got one one side, one the other. Okay, and give it a nice tug again. Make sure I've got enough. Yep. Yeah. One. Now, I tend to put a tiny, tiny, weeny bit of glue on this knot, okay? But I don't do that until after, just in case I have to take it out. All right, there we go. So that's done. Wasn't without its um, traumas. <laughs> that's in there nice and tight, okay? And then that gives me now, I know where to put the paper which I'll find in a minute. So, but that's all sewn in. There we go. Oh, and if you want to do a closure, um, you know, and it's the ribbon inside, you'll have to do it before you sew the signature in. Okay, but I'm going to stitch mine on, so, because my little singer, old vintage sewing machine, go through any of this, so, which is ideal. Okay, so that's sewn in. All right, so I'll just go and do the other one. And then I'll be back. And I've got plenty here. If not, it was it is a little bit too much, but it's I would rather do that than not have enough. So I would say three and a half times will be fine. And that's nice and firm in there. That's not going anywhere. Okay. Okay, on with the inside cover. So what I do here is I because I've only just cut these two in half, and I? And that one's going to go here. Okay. And I want a bit about a centimetre or half an inch gap there. All right. So, but I'll turn it around because I want to come off that edge. So, I'll get that like so. A bit less than that, actually. That's about right. Okay. Then I'll mark how much I want off okay where well, I'll go up to the stitching all right and then that gives me a bit of leeway and then I'll trim those both down the same size at the same time okay all 
I usually line it on my board. This, with some paper trimmers. Once you start cutting card, they, they go blunt so easily. And then I'm gonna have to get my head in though. Let's see my measurement, sorry. I'm gonna try and put that there. I think I need a new knife as well. Okay. And then ink up the edges. Oh, I'm gonna put my needle away. Um, ink up the edges, and then I will mod podge these. Okay, because we haven't finished the journal, and it's you know I'm gonna be to and fro in and everything, so it's best to get those protected. All right. I mean, you could wait till the end, you know, but I I want to pock it in and things like that. So I'm gonna do it now, but I'll mod podge them. All right. Right, they're dry. I've been mod podged. So they're well protected now if you get marks and everything on and I mean a lot of this will be covered down, up anyway but I just like it done okay I just feel that it just adds a bit of protection okay so they can be stuck in now okay. I've noticed I say okay a lot <laughs> that's my one of my words by the look of it I use okay then <laughs> And I'm using um, the Cole Holt one. It's very similar to the 3-in-1 one by, you know, the Fabri-Tac. Because I've got the 3-in-1 one as well. Very similar. I just picked hold of this first. But for gluing bag paper and things, this dries quite quick as well. So it's quite good. A lot of people don't like this one because it escapes. If it's hot weather, it sort of bubbles up. So you've got to be a bit careful. But it's um, colder here now. So I tend to use this one more often i think I, I get this one from hobby craft it's three pound fifty but i think you can get a better deal online col cohol colol colol yeah it smells similar to fab attack as well let's check that it's around the right way and we'll stick that in Hopefully my head doesn't get in the way. I need to I'll turn it around and then so I've got a little bit of time. I want to bring that closer to the edge. There. And down a bit. I always make sure we get nice lines going there. And then if it's gonna be a bit wonky, it's here. Because at the end of the day we can always cover that up. You know with a bit of lace or anything like that so i don't worry but make sure this nice edge is nice there okay. it's a bit stiff I need to work it <laughs> What I'm doing here is just I'm just seeing where it's matching up to with the front cover on the other on the inside. All right, so making sure that's. Some people do this all first, but I don't because I don't know how much I need here. But if you do, then yes, do it first. But. Okay, 
Okay. Right, so on with the pages then. I'll add some lace on that one, I think. Straight away, I'm sort of beginning. Oh, I get excited doing this. Because <laughs> I think, oh, I can decorate now. <laughs> And we've got a journal already. <laughs> Let's say it's not going to be. Um, let's make sure everything's straight. Not going to be too over decorated, or else it won't be in the bag. So I'm going to have a bit of that lace there before I think about it. So I'm going to do. I'm going to just go through and have a look, see where I need a bit of lace before I do anything else. I'm not sure where I'm going to put the pockets or anything yet. I always do that. I always fold that over because I haven't glued it down yet because I just feel it helps that page from buckling. On, when you have an extra page like that, it just makes it lie flatter. Yeah, a bit of white lace in there as well. I'm going to do that now. Well, I remember. Right, let's have a look. I need me acetate. I'm going to have a different lace there. Got this wider one here, so because um, that was quite near that, I've just tucked that in. Okay, and then I'll glue that down. And then I'll put lace over it. And we've got a nice edge then. sometimes put a nice nice little tab on as well <clears throat> trim that off after And I didn't sew it in upside down. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's upside down. <laughs> Don't do that to me. Right, okay. <laughs> right, so I thought I'd do the inside pocket now. And this is what I'm going to use the loaded pocket that I included in the kit. Okay, so you just cut all that out. Okay, and cut all those elements out. Um, if you want to, I've got a tutorial on the loaded pocket, um, which I'll link below. Um, and my pages on that one are turned out and I printed on the back of that or coffee stain the back, okay? But I'm gonna do it the other way today. I'm gonna do it so that the pocket, the, the corners turn in, all right? So after you've cut all those bits out, which I've done here, okay? And score those as well, or I just fold them. I just fold them. I printed um, mine that one, I printed on like about 120 gram gizm paper, and this about the same. Okay, if it's thin paper, you do it on, which I'll show you. I'll just fold this over a minute. Then I use this. Okay, to turn over, just fold on the dotted line. I mean, you can score it, but like so. Okay, that re reinforces the top. But because I've done this on card and I'm most probably put lace on the top, I'm going to cut mine off. Okay, so 
I actually just cut this out again because I'd lost it. <laughs> when I cut out, I couldn't find it anywhere. It's hiding somewhere. There we go. Okay. So, ink the edges up. And then we can get on. Which I will do now. That's it. Got to make sure I've got everything. Okay. Right, so what I do, so you're, you've got a piece like that. Let's cut out. Okay. And I just fold over. All right. But I will take some of this bulk away. I wasn't sure. Let's cut the creases in there because I wasn't sure where I was going to cut it to. But I'm going to not cut it to, fold it to. But I'm going to cut these off. You don't need them. So. It stops it being too bulky. Okay. So I glue those down glue those down first and I'm going to put a bit of lace on mine so I'm going to do that first whereas last time I'd done it I had to sort of like maneuver it inside because I forgot so stick them down What I do with this bit here because we've got a join, right? I'll just check which way I'm going to go. Okay, well, I think that one looks better, does it? Well, you cover that. So, look, yeah, it's that one that way. Okay, so that's being hidden, so that doesn't matter, and that's quite straight because normally, if you want to, um, if that's on the top, then I would cut up straight. Okay, but then I usually put a dangle or something there anyway. And then here, I'll cut down here where that crease is. I'll cut to there, like slight angle, like so. Okay, so when that that then goes in the corner, like so, like that, and then you would trim there. Okay, so it sort of mitres the corner a bit there. All right. What's that? But like first off, while that's drying, we can put this one in. <clears throat> it goes that way in there. And it'll go like so. Okay, and then a little bead of glue on this edge. And a little bit on there. that to dry. I'm just going to burnish this a bit because I only just folded it over so it tends to lay nice and flat if you yeah, do this. Okay. 
you're sticking it down, you can um, just do that that way. But if you if you're going to have it floating, you could push that inside like that and then stick it down to the back. Okay. bit first not quite just away from the the line there the score mark okay two sides. Just make sure it's lined up. There we go. Then I burnish again. dry. Get a nice pocket here. A nice one there. Oh, on the on the actual printout, that's right. The birds are opposite each other, okay? When I first this was when I first done and I done it and they were all facing the same way, but I think the find on the other other one it says it's right, okay? Did like that. Okay, right, time to stick the, or glue, not stick it in, glue it to the inside cover. Yeah, I think actually I'm going to just ink around there a bit more. Matching with the owl, it's a brownie owl, but very wintry scene. And what I've done, I think, because I've back, I've cut the tags out, and I put some jute on them, because I think then that brought that colour in from here. All right, and also just added a plain tag for now, but I will put some on that. But okay, so let's stick this in first. I'm going to use Fabri-Tac for that. Coming in a little bit in case I put a hole there. Actually, just a little bit more there. Okay. Oops. And I thought this one here, I was going to add some glitter again to it. Okay, so that snow is. Glitter a minute. Okay, that just adds a little bit of interest there. I'm just going to come on here. Okay, like that. 
needs to dry a little bit, so um, that one's okay. That one's all right. Yeah, no, I just leave it with that one. I don't want I don't want overload of glitter at all. So it's just to give a just an inkling. That's all. Let's put that in. And that just pokes out there with a bit of glitter. That's good. And then I need that one. Oh, I need to go over there. I want them to just poke out like that. And then perhaps that one. And another one. Okay. And we want lace, might have a tiny bit of that actually. Let's have a look, see what it looks like. Yeah, just that bit, that's fine, because we've got it up there, so 